In this beginner tutorial, I will show you how to use cloth physics in Blender. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create three different types of cloth physics. So we're going to create a hanging towel. We're also going to be creating a flag animation with a moving flagpole. And then we're also going to have some fabric, which is draped over another object. And I'll show you the basics of cloth physics in Blender through creating these three different simulations. Now just a couple things before we start, if you find these tutorials helpful and you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then some great places to do that are on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, you can get access to 3D models and assets, tutorial files, procedural materials, artwork project files, and other Blender content on my Gumroad and Patreon. You can also get access to these finished cloth simulations simulation project files as well on my Gumroad and Patreon. And some great ways to help support the channel here on YouTube is by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on the join button next to the subscribe button. And if you join my memberships, then you'll be helping to support the channel monthly and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. And you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip and help support this channel. So here I am in a new scene in Blender, and my screencast keys will be right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So the first animation that I'm going to create is a hanging towel. So I'm going to start by deleting everything. So I will press the A key to select everything, and I'll just press X and click on delete. Always make sure you delete the default cube. So I'm now going to press Shift A and we're going to go to Mesh and I want to add a plain object because a plain object is best for a towel. And I'm going to zoom into the plane. Now I want to model this closer to the real life scale in Blender and the default primitive objects in Blender like the default cube is about the size of an average human height. So what I'm going to do is hit S to scale, then I can type 0.3 and then enter. And that is a much closer size to a towel using the real life scale in Blender. Now I also want to scale this out on the X axis, which is back and forth so that it's a longer towel. So I'm going to hit S to scale, then I'll hit X to scale it on the X axis, and I'm going to type 2 and then enter. And then I just want to press Control A, and I want to apply the scale, so this is now the object's new default size. Now if I press the Tab key to go into Edit Mode, and press the A key to select the vertices, you can see this object isn't very high topology. It's actually very low poly, there's only four vertices. And this isn't going to work well when doing cloth simulations, because the cloth physics uses the object's geometry when it's simulating the cloth. And so if the object is more detailed, if it has more geometry, then the cloth simulation will be more detailed. So I want to give this object more faces. Now I want the faces to be pretty even to a square shape, and so that's why I scaled the plane out by exactly two. So what I can do is press Ctrl R to add a loop cut, and then I can left click and then right click so that that loop cut stays in the center. So now these faces are a perfect square. So I'm now going to press the A key to select everything, and I want to subdivide the mesh. So you can just right click to bring up the object context menu. I use the W key because I use the right click select, but you can just right click and bring up the object context menu in edit mode, and I'm going to click on subdivide. And make sure that you have the entire object selected when you do this. So when you click on the subdivide button, you can see it's actually subdividing the faces. Now right above my head right there, there's the subdivide settings. I'm going to click on this to open it up. And there's a number of cuts, and we can turn this up to make it more detailed. Detailed. Now, as I said before, if there is more geometry, it's going to be more detailed, but the more detailed it is, the slower the simulation will be. So I'm going to use 35 cuts. So on the cuts here, I'm just going to change that to 35. And so that is pretty detailed, but it's not so detailed that it'll be super laggy. Of course, it will depend on your computer's performance. So if you want to, you could turn it down, or if you want a very detailed class simulation, you could turn it up even more. I'm just going to go with 35, and then I can click on the arrow to close this. Now, now before we add cloth physics, while the object is still nice and flat, now is the time to UV unwrap the object if you want to UV unwrap it. And you use UV unwrapping when you're applying textures to the object's material. So I'm going to click right over here on the UV editing workspace and I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see the default primitive objects in Blender are already UV unwrapped, but we scaled this up and so I want to re-UV unwrap this. So for a very simple object like this, I can just press the A key to select everything and I can hit the U button and I can just click on unwrap and just re UV unwrap it. And now you can see the UV unwrap is flat and it's the correct size. It's the same size as the towel and so that will work well for adding a texture onto the object. So I'm just going to click right back over here to the layout. 
So now we want to add cloth physics to the plane. So to add cloth physics, we can click right over here to go to the physics properties. And there are a bunch of different properties that you can add. And I actually have a separate tutorial on rigid body physics for beginners. So if you'd like to learn all about rigid body physics, you can check out that tutorial with the link in the description. But to add cloth physics, we just want to click on the cloth button right here. And then down here are all of the different cloth settings. Now it might look a bit complicated and it might look a bit overwhelming, but most of these settings I actually just keep at the defaults. And I'll show you the most important settings that I think beginners should know. Now something that's important for you to know is that the cloth physics are actually added as a modifier. So if you go over here to the modifier properties, you can see there is actually a cloth modifier. And if you click here to add modifier, the other way to add a physics is to add it as a modifier. So you can click on add modifier and you can add cloth and it's gonna do the same thing as doing it right over here on the physics properties. And why it's important to know that the cloth physics are a modifier is because you might have other modifiers on the object. And so those modifiers might interact with the cloth physics. And later in this video, we're going to be adding the solidify modifier to actually make the cloth thick. And then we're also going to be adding the subdivision surface modifier to give it more geometry and smooth it out. But I just wanted to make you aware right now that the cloth physics are a modifier. So let's click right back over here to the physics properties, or you can also click on this button right here and that'll take you over to the physics properties. So to actually see the cloth taking effect, you can click the play button right here on the timeline or the shortcut key is the space bar. So when I hit the space bar, you can see the plane is just gonna fall and it's just gonna fall forever in this 3D scene. So I want to click on this button right here just to bring it back to the starting. Now, if you look down here on the timeline, you can see there's this kind of dark blue or purple line there and that is telling us that blender has simulated that part of the simulation so if i press the space bar again you can see it's falling and we're just going to wait till it goes over here and you can see when i press the space bar again to stop this it adds that blue kind of bluish purple line there and so that's telling us that it simulated that area now if at any time your simulation starts to get laggy while you're playing it instead of pressing the space bar and having it simulate the physics in real time what you can do is bake the simulation instead so i'm going to scroll right down here and I'm going to open up the cache tab and so on the cache tab you can choose a simulation start and a simulation end and then you can hit the bake button and instead of it calculating the simulation in real time it's going to bake it and then you can play the simulation and it will be very smooth so just to show you I'm going to leave the simulation start and end at the defaults so it'll start at frame one and then end at frame 250 and I'm going to hit the bake button and so you can see it's going to go through and it's going to bake the simulation and so if I'm working with a more complex or more detailed simulation, it can start to get laggy in the viewport. And so then I'll start to bake the simulation instead of playing it in real time. So now that the bake is finished, I can press the space bar and it's completely baked it. Now it doesn't really look any different and that's because this is a very simple simulation, but later on in the video, it will get a bit more laggy. And so baking the simulation can be very helpful. And also if you ever change anything and you want to rebake it, you just need to click on delete bake and then click on bake again. But for now, I'm just going to play the simulation in real time. So I just deleted that bake. Now, I don't want this towel to just be falling in the 3D scene forever. I want it to look like it's hung up maybe on a nail or on a towel hanger. So to do this, we are going to add what's called a pin group. So if you press the tab key to go into edit mode, we are going to select some of these vertices and we're going to tell these vertices that they're not going to be moving around. So we're basically just going to pin some of the vertices, but then the rest of the vertices will still be acting like a normal simulation. And so the rest of the vertices are going to hang on one small area. So you can really pick whatever area that you want. What I'm going to do is click right here to go to the face select, and then I'm just going to click on one of these faces, which are right up here to select it. So just click on one of those faces. You could really select any face. You could select one here in the corner or one right here in the center. I'm just going to select one of these faces right here. And so we are going to pin this part of the geometry. And so that way it'll stay where it is. And then the rest of the towel will hang from it. So now that we have that face selected, to pin it, we need to click right over here to the object data properties. And then we need to open up the vertex group. Now we need to add a new group. So we're going to click on the plus here to add a new group. And you can rename this if you want to. So I'm just going to rename this to towel. And then with that face selected or with any vertices selected, you can click on the assign button. So now that geometry is assigned to the towel group. So we can now click right back here on the physics properties. And then let's scroll down here. And I'm going to open up the shape right here. So just click on shape and I'm going to scroll down and you can see that there is a pin group. So we can click right here and then we can select 
our towel group. So I can now press the tab key to go back to object mode and I can hit the space bar to play and you can see that part is going to be pinned so it's going to stay where it is. And you can already see this is starting to get a little bit laggy. Right up here you can see the frames per second so it is getting a little bit laggy. So if it is too laggy for you then you could do the baking instead. You could click on the bake button and bake it. Um, but for now it's fine. It is just a little bit slow but it's not too bad. And now that it's simulated this part in the timeline it actually is going really fast. But then if I like click over here to the end you can see now it slows down a bit because it is simulating this part right here so I can press the space bar to stop it and then you can see that it simulated that area but sometimes if you move the timeline back and then press the space bar to play again it's going to have to re-simulate that area and then to make this object look a little bit nicer using the object context menu I can shade the object smooth so that is a bit better now there's a bunch of problems with this simulation which we are going to fix so the first problem is that the towel is going through itself and that of course is not very realistic. So to fix this, I'm going to open up the collisions right here. So just open up collisions and I'm going to scroll down and you can see that there is a self collision. So I'm going to click on this to turn it on and then I can click on this button here to go back to the frame one and then I can hit the space bar again to play. And you can see it's going to be much more laggy because we've turned on the self collisions and so now it has more data to calculate. Now if I press the space bar again to stop this or hit the escape key, you can see there is a problem here. The simulation is kind of bunching up and so why this is happening is because of this distance value here on the self collision and so right now this distance value is turned up too high and so we want to make the distance value smaller now another way to fix this would just be to scale the object up so if you wanted to you could scale the object up but I'm just going to keep it at the size that it is and I'm going to instead turn this distance down so on the self collisions distance value I'm going to turn this to a 0 0.005 and so this way the amount of distance is going to be smaller before it starts to take effect with it bumping into itself. So I'm now going to hit the space bar again and you can see the simulation is much faster and that looks much more accurate. Now if you scroll right up here to the top of the simulation settings you can see that there is quality steps and so if you turn this number up it is going to be higher quality but again it will be more laggy. So I could just maybe turn this up to like a 10 so it's a bit higher quality. I can bring this back to the starting and then press the space bar to play and it is a little bit more laggy but it will be a bit higher quality or if I just turn the quality steps down to like two I can play this again and you can see that is much faster but there is a few problems like you can see there is a little bit of overlapping uh, kind of like right here so it's not quite as nice you can see it's bunching up a little bit so that's not quite as good so if you wanted it to be faster you could do that or you could turn this up much higher to maybe like a 10 so it's higher quality and again if it is being laggy in the viewport instead of playing it in real time you could bake the simulation instead. So I could click on the bake button and you can see it's going to go through and it's going to be a bit slow. And so when I hit the bake button you can see it's going to go through and bake the animation. I'm just going to hit the escape key to cancel that but now I can scrub through here and it's going to be really fast and there's not any lag because it is baked the simulation. I'm just going to delete the bake though. Now also if you want to make the simulation faster if you again go right here to the top you can see there is a speed multiplier. And so this is very straightforward if you want the speed to be faster you could just turn it up so I could turn this up to like a five and then I could play this and you can see it's going to be much faster or if I wanted this to be very slow maybe I want it to look like it's a slow motion video I could turn the speed multiplier to like a 0.3 and then I could play this and you can see it's going to act very slow but for now I will just leave the speed multiplier at one now there's also this vertex mass here and this is going to change the weight of the towel and on default in blender it is showing us the weight in kilograms and I live in the United States so instead of using kilograms we use pounds and so I just converted this online and 0.5 kilograms is about one pound. So then I can go back here and I can play the simulation again and it should be a bit more accurate. But just to show you this taking effect I could turn this way up so I could turn it to like 10 and then I could go back here and play this and you can see it's going to droop way down because it is a very heavy towel. Or I could turn this maybe to a very small number like 0.01. I'm going to go back here and then play this again and you can see the towel is very light. It almost is acting like a feather or like some silk or a very very light cloth. 
I will turn this to a 0.5 though because I think that is pretty good for a towel. Now there are a lot of other settings that you can play around with. For instance, there is a stiffness here and there is a bending. So I could turn this bending up maybe to like a five and then I could go back here and play the animation and you can see it's not going to bend quite as much. And then there also are quite a few other settings that you can play around with if you wanna change the look of the claw simulation. So I'm just going to play the timeline by hitting the space bar and I'm just gonna let this play through through to the end. And something like that is pretty good, so I just want the towel to look like it's hanging down. Now to make this look better, we can add some other modifiers to this object. Because if you zoom in closely, you can see that this towel actually doesn't have any thickness, it is like paper thin. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the modifier properties, and we can add the solidify modifier to this object. So let's click on add modifier, and here under generate, we're going to add the solidify modifier. And then you can drag the thickness value, and I'm just going to turn the thickness up a little bit. It. So now the cloth has a little bit of thickness. Now this actually isn't really going to affect the simulation because this solidify modifier is after the cloth modifier. And that is very important because if I click right here on these little dots and drag the solidify up first, it's going to add the solidify and then it's going to add the cloth. And so it's basically going to simulate both sides of the cloth. And so if I play this, it's going to be very, very laggy because there is now double the topology and also the cloth might open up because it has some empty areas inside. You can see right here, there's just like some extra air pockets inside. And so that is not what I want. So I wanna click and then drag this down and drop it down here because within the modifiers, the modifiers work in order from top to bottom. So it first uses the first modifier and then the next modifier and the next modifier. So I'm gonna drag this back here and then play this again to simulate it. Now you can also see here on the edges that it is a little bit low poly. And so to fix this, I'm gonna be adding the subdivision surface modifier. So let's click on add modifier and here under generate, I'm gonna add the subdivision surface. And I want the subdivision surface modifier to be after the cloth and the solidify. And then also right here on the levels viewport and render, I'm just gonna turn this to one so that it is just one level of subdivision. But now if I play this, you can see it's gonna be much more smooth because it is subdividing the mesh after it simulates it. And again, it's important that the subdivision is after the cloth physics because if you add the subdivision surface right up here, if you click on the little dots and drag it up, it's going to subdivide the mesh and you can see there's some weird glitches. That's because I just need to drag it back to the starting. So just click right here at the starting and then you can play it again. But because the subdivision surface modifier is before the cloth physics, it's going to be extremely laggy because it is so high poly. Now, this is one way that you could make your mesh more high poly. So if you wanted to, you could do it like that. You could add the subdivision and then add the cloth physics, but I'm going to hit the escape key to stop the simulation because I already subdivided the mesh in edit mode, so I don't need to add the subdivision. So I'm going to click and drag and drag the subdivision down to the bottom. And so that's it. That is the hanging towel. So then of course you could like add a wall and you could also like model a little peg and you could make the towel hanging on a wall. Now, if you want to apply this so that it is actual geometry, what you can do is go over here to the modifiers and then you can just apply the cloth modifier. So you just need to move the timeline to wherever you want the cloth to be. This is good right here at frame 110. So then what you can do is click on the drop down, and you can click on the apply button. So when you do this, now if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see it has now applied the shape of that. And if I press the space bar to play, there is no cloth simulation. And so it has applied the cloth physics, and this is now where the object is. Or if you were wanting to create an animation instead, you could, of course, keep the cloth physics. So I can just press Control Z to bring that back. All right, so I've just opened up a new scene in Blender, and we're now going to be creating the flag animation. So I'm going to start by pressing Shift A. Let's go to mesh and let's add a plane for the flag. And then I want to rotate the flag over. So I'm going to hit R to rotate. Let's hit X and then I can type in 90 and then enter. And then I also want to scale this up. So I'll hit S to scale. We'll scale it up on the X axis and I will type in two and then enter. And then so that this object is closer to the real life scale in Blender, I'm going to hit S to scale and I'll type in 0.5 and enter. So it's still kind of a large flag, but it is a better size. So now I'll press control A and I'm going to apply the scale. So this is now the object's new default size. So if I I press the tab key to go into edit mode just like we did for the first 
first one, we need to add more geometry. And I do want the faces in the geometry to be pretty close to a square so that the amount of detail is pretty consistent. It doesn't have to be an exact square, but I want it to be pretty close. But with how I modeled this, it can be an exact square. So I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut, and then I can left click and then right click so it stays in the center. Then I'm going to press the A key to select all the vertices, and I want to subdivide this, so you can just right click to bring up the object context menu and then click on subdivide. Right above me there's the little subdivide setting, so I can open this up, and then I can turn up the number of cuts. So I'm going to turn this up to like 30, I think 30 is pretty good for a flag. You can turn this up more if you want there to be more detail, but the more detailed it is, the slower the simulation will be. And then again, if you want to UV unwrap this, now is the time to do that before we start doing the physics. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the UV editing tab, and I'm going to zoom in here. And with the entire mesh selected, I can just press U, and then I can just click on unwrap to unwrap it. And that is a fine UV unwrap. So let's just click right back over here to the layout. So now we want to add a cloth simulation to this flag. So there's two ways to do it. You can do it right over here on the physics properties and then clicking on cloth, or you can click right over here on the modifier properties and you can click on add modifier and you can add cloth. Either way, it will do the same thing. And then let's click right over here to go to the physics properties. So now if I press the space bar to play the animation, you can see that the flag just falls and falls into the 3D scene. So I'm going to drag the timeline back. So to fix this, just like we did with the first animation, I want to add a pin group and I want to pin this side of the flag. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. And then if you wanted to, you could hold down the alt key and then click right here to select that entire loop of vertices. But I just want to select the four top vertices and the four bottom vertices. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the four top ones, go down here to the bottom, hold down the shift key and select the four bottom ones. So we can now click right over here on the object data properties and we want to open up the vertex group. And then right here we want to click on the plus to add a new vertex group. And then those vertices are selected so I can click on the assign button. So now those vertices are assigned to this group. So we can now click right back over here to the physics properties and I'm going to scroll down and we want to open up the shape right here and you can see it there is a pin group. So we wanna click right here on the pin group and just select the group that we made. So this way, these vertices are gonna stay where they are, but then the rest of the mesh will be acting like a cloth. So I can press the tab key to go back to object mode, and then I can press the space bar to play the animation. And there we have it. So now the flag is attached to these two areas, but then the rest of the flag is moving around. Now you can see that the flag is going through itself, so I want to fix that. So if I go right down here to the collisions tab, I want to open this up, and I want to turn on the self collisions. So now it will collide with itself. So I can go back to the starting and press the space bar to play. And you can see it is a bit slower now, but it is more realistic. Now you can see that it's bunching up in some areas and that doesn't look very nice. And that is again because the distance value is too big. So on the distance value, I'm just going to turn this to a 0 0.005 and that should be good. So I can now move this back to the starting and I can press the space bar again to play. And that is looking a lot better. And using the object context menu, I can shade the object smooth so that it is more smooth. Now I also want to make this a little bit higher quality because you can see right here it's like going through that pin group and overall it doesn't look the highest quality. So I want to make this higher quality. So on the collisions quality I can turn this up to like a 10 so it is higher quality. And also if I go right up here to the top you can see on the very top here there is a quality steps and if I turn this up it'll be higher quality as well. So I could just turn this up to like a 10. You could turn it up even higher if you want. So then I can click on this button right here or go back to the starting and then press the space bar to play. And again, if it's acting too laggy for you, then you can go right down here. You can open up the cache right here and you can bake it instead. So if you bake it, it'll be nice and smooth because it'll have already baked it and then it will play it in real time. So by turning up the simulation quality, it definitely looks a bit better. Now this is a flag, so I want to make it look like it is flapping in the wind. So you can actually add wind physics in Blender. So to do this, we need to add a new object. 
So let's press shift A and I'm gonna go right down here to force field and then we can add the wind. So we wanna rotate this object to wherever we want the wind to be pointing. So I'm gonna hit R to rotate, just rotate that over and then bring it over here. I can just stick it there. Now it doesn't actually matter where it is in the 3D viewport. Even if the wind object is way over here, it still is gonna blow wind all over the scene from this direction. So it doesn't really matter where the object is. It's more important where the object is rotated because wherever it's rotated, that is where the direction of the wind will be. But I will just bring it right over here so it kind of makes sense. So if I bring this back to the starting and hit the space bar again to play, you can see it really isn't doing that much. And that's because the strength of this wind object is very, very small. So if you have the wind object selected, you can go here to the physics properties and there's gonna be a bunch of different settings. So the main setting that I wanna turn up is this strength value. So I could, for instance, turn this up to like a thousand. And when I turn up to a thousand, you can see these little circles here, they get farther apart. So if it's less strong, then these circles are gonna be really close. and then they're going to be farther apart if the strength is bigger. So I can now go back here to the starting and I can press the space bar to play and it is now going to have a small effect but you can see it's still not that strong. So I'm going to turn the strength up to 100,000. So 100 and then three more zeros. So now I can go back to the starting and I can play this and you can see it's definitely affecting it more. Now, if you wanna make the wind a bit more noisy, you can turn up the noise amount. And I'm gonna turn up the noise amount to 10 just so that it's very noisy, and I think that will make it look more organic and natural. Now, this wind is pretty strong, so what we can actually do is make the flag lighter, and then this wind won't have to be quite as strong. So if you click back on the flag here, we can go to the vertex mass. And on the vertex mass, I could just turn this down to like a 0.05, and that way it's gonna be a much lighter flag. So if I go back to the starting and play it, you can see now it's being affected by the wind a lot because it's a very light flag. So now if I click back here on the wind, I could make this much less strong. So I'm just going to go with a 10,000 and that looks pretty good. So now the strength is at 10,000 and the flag is a bit lighter and that definitely looks better. And I like that it has all those little ripples there in the flag animation. Now what's really cool about the pin group that we added is that we can move the object and by moving the object, it's gonna move where the pin group is. And then the rest of the flag will move along with it. So it might be a little bit laggy in the viewport, but what I can do is just press the space bar to play and then I can press G to grab and I can move the object around. And it is a little bit laggy because it's trying to simulate it in real time, but you can see that if I move the flag around, it's gonna move that pin group around. So that is super cool. But it is kind of laggy because it's trying to simulate it in real time so I'm going to hit the escape key to bring it back to its default position so what I'm going to do instead is animate this object and then we can bake the simulation and it'll look much more smooth so real quick I'm just going to add a very simple flagpole so I'll just press shift a I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder and I can scale the cylinder way down and I can also scale the cylinder up on the z-axis and then I want to smooth the edges so I can just use the object context menu and use the shade auto smooth so it shades the edges and I can bring this over and just bring it down maybe scale it down a little bit I'm just making a very very simple flagpole so now what I want to do is parent the flag to the flagpole so I'm first going to select the flag then I can hold down the shift key and select the pole and so the pole is selected selected last. So I can now press control P and that's going to bring up Blender's parent options and I want to click on object keep transform and the keep transform is just going to make sure the objects stay where they are. So object keep transform. So now if I select the flagpole and move it around, it's going to move the flag around. So we can now animate this flagpole. So I'm going to start at frame one and I wanna add a keyframe right here. So what I'm gonna do is actually click on this button right here to turn on the auto keying. So this way, whenever we transform the object, it's automatically gonna add a keyframe. So then to add the first keyframe, I'm just gonna press the I key and then I'm just going to click on location and rotation. So it's gonna add location and rotation keyframes. And then what I can do is move the timeline over and I'm gonna move it over to like frame 50. So I can now rotate the flag pull and I'm gonna move the flag pull over. Although you can see it's not moving yet, it hasn't updated. That's because I need to go back here and it will update. So I can now press the space bar to play and you can see that it's going to actually move the flag over. So I'm gonna go over here to frame 100 now. And so I'm going to add keyframes every 50 frames. So I can now rotate the flag pull, kind of move it 
over and I'm just kind of making a very simple animation just so that you can see the flag actually moving along. So I can now go to frame 150 and then I'll move the flag pull again. So maybe move it back here. Then I can go to like frame 200 and I can maybe move it forward and maybe rotate it kind of straight up, something like that. So now you can see I just have a very, very basic animation. So I now want to bake the flag animation. So I'm going to click on the flag and then I can go right down here to the cache. Now you can see the simulation start and simulation end is at 1 and 250, and that's what I want just because my frames are between 1 and 250. But you can change this if you have a longer or shorter animation. And then I can click on the bake button, and it's going to go through and bake it, so then after it's baked we can play the simulation and it will be very smooth. All right, so the baking is finished, so I can press the space bar to play, and you can see that is looking super cool. Now another thing that we can do is we can animate the wind. So one thing that I want to do is animate the strength of the wind. So what I'm going to do is go to frame 150, and then from frame 150 to 200, I'm going to make the wind be less strong. So what I can do is select the wind, and then right here on the strength, I can add a keyframe at 150. So to add a keyframe, I'm going to hover my mouse over the strength value, and then I'm going to press the I key to insert a keyframe. Then I can go over to frame 200, and I want to turn the strength to zero, so I'll just turn the strength to zero, and then because we had the auto keying on, it automatically added a keyframe. So then I could go back and I could rebake this, and the flag would kind of droop down because it's less strong. Now before I bake this again, there is one more thing that I want to do. I want to actually animate the rotation of the wind to just show you that taking effect. So I'm going to press 7 on the numpad to go to top view, and I'm first going to go to frame 100. And I want to add a rotation keyframe right here. So with the wind selected, I can press the I key to insert a keyframe, and I can just click on rotation. So I can now go over to like frame 125, and I can rotate this over so that the wind will be pointed in a different direction. And actually, if I go right back over here to frame 100, I could also rotate rotate this over, maybe rotate it like that, and so that way it'll kind of rotate over. And then maybe I could also go back here to maybe frame 75, and I could rotate this back kind of in the center. So now to bake this again, I can click back on the flag, and I can scroll down here, and I just want to click on delete bake on the cache, and then I can bake that again. So I can now press the spacebar to play the animation, you can see the flag is pointed forwards, and then you can see as the wind rotates, the cloth is going to rotate over. Over. You can see it's going to rotate back, and then also right here at the end of the animation, you can see the wind goes to zero. So the strength turns to zero, and so the flag just kind of hangs over. So that is pretty cool. And then to make the fabric look a little bit nicer, we can go right here to the modifier properties, and we can click on add modifier, and under generate, we can add the solidify modifier. And I can zoom in here, and I can just change the thickness, so I'll maybe just make it pretty thin. I don't want the cloth to be very thick. And then also you can see here on the edges, it is a little bit rough, so let's click on Add Modifier, and just like the first cloth physics, we can add the Subdivision Surface Modifier. And right here on the Levels and Viewport, I can just turn this to 1, and now you can see the fabric is much more smooth. And again, it is important that these modifiers are after the cloth physics, because we first want the cloth physics to take effect, and then we can make it solid and subdivide it. So there we go, we now have a really nice flag animation. All right, so I've opened up a new scene in Blender, and the last one that we're going to be creating is some cloth draped over an object. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to Mesh, and I'm just going to add a monkey head because a monkey head has some cool interesting shapes, and it'll be cool to drop a cloth or some fabric over the monkey head. I'm also going to press Control 2 to add the subdivision surface modifier, and then using the object context menu, I can shade the object smooth. And I can also rotate this object over just so that the monkey head is kind of pointed up and maybe rotate it up a little bit. And then this monkey head right now is about the size of a person using the real life scale in Blender. So I'm just going to hit S to scale. I'll type 0.3 and then enter. So now that is quite a bit smaller. So maybe now it's the size of a small chair or something like that. And then I can press Control A and I want to apply the scale. And I can bring the object down a little bit. So I now want to add a plane for the cloth. 
So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go to Mesh, and I can add a plane. And then I want to scale this down because it's actually quite big right now. So I will hit S to scale. I will type 0.7 and then Enter. And then I can bring this up on the Z axis, kind of bring it up above the monkey. And I can press Control A and then apply the object scale. So just like we did with the other simulations, we need to subdivide this because if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, it has very little geometry and so it'll look very low quality and it won't simulate properly. So press the A key to select all of the mesh in edit mode and then using the object context menu, you can just click on subdivide. And then right above me, there's the subdivide setting. So I'm just going to open this up. And for this object, I'm going to turn this up to like 50 because I do want it to be pretty high quality. And then I can close the subdivide setting. So that will be pretty good. And then again, before you start simulating this, it's best to UV unwrap the object now. So I'm going to go right over here to the UV editing tab. And you can see this default plane was already UV unwrapped, so we don't have to UV unwrap it. So I can now go back here to the layout. So let's now add cloth physics to the plane. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the physics properties, and then I can just click on cloth. Now if I press the space bar to play the animation, you can see that the cloth goes right through the monkey. And that's because we haven't told this object that it's going to interact with the physics. So on default when you add any objects, the objects aren't going to interact with the physics unless you tell the object to interact with the physics. So what we want to do is select the monkey head or select any object which you want to interact with the physics. And for this object, I don't want it to move, but I want it to stop the cloth. So with the object selected, we are going to click on collision. So I can press the spacebar to play, and now you can see the cloth falls on the monkey head. And that is looking really cool. Let's also click on the cloth, and then with the object context menu, we can shade the object smooth so it looks a bit nicer. And if for some reason the cloth is still going through the monkey, then just select the cloth object, and you need to open up the collisions right down here on the cloth settings, and you need to make sure object collisions is turned on. But it should be turned on on default fault, but just make sure that that is checkmarked so it interacts with the objects which have the collision. Now if I zoom in here and go inside it, you can see there is a little bit of space between the cloth and the monkey, and I want to make this smaller. So right here on the object collisions, we can turn down this distance. So I'm going to turn the distance down to a 0.005 so there is a smaller distance in between the monkey head and the cloth. So I can now bring this back to the starting and I can press the space bar to play and that definitely looks better. Now it might depend on where your cloth is on the monkey but eventually the cloth is probably going to fall off of the monkey. You can see it's starting to fall off here right at the very end. But that's not very realistic. I don't really want the cloth to just kind of slide off. It looks very slick and it's just falling off pretty quickly. And so I want to add more friction so that the cloth doesn't fall off quite as fast. So I'm going to go back here to the starting. And I also want to turn on the self collision because when I was playing the animation, the cloth was going through itself. So by turning on the self collision, the cloth will collide with itself. But now that the self collision is turned on, we also have this friction value. So we can turn up the friction value and that'll make the cloth less slippery. So I'm going to turn this friction value all the way up to the max of 80. I'm just going to drag it all the way over to the max. And so this way the cloth will have lots more friction and so it's going to have a much harder time falling off of the monkey head. Now when I play this you can see it's all bunching up just like before in the other animations and that is again because of this distance value. So the geometry of the cloth is too close to itself. So right here on the distance I can just turn this to a point. 005 and then I can bring this back and play that again and that is looking much better. Now I also want to make the cloth physics a little bit higher quality. So right here on the collisions quality I'm going to turn this up to like 10 so it's a bit nicer and also if you go right up here go to the very top on the quality steps I could make this a bit higher so I'm actually going to turn this up to like a 15 so it's quite a bit higher quality and if you turn this up it will be a bit nicer but it will also be a bit slower. So now I can play this again. And then just like we did before with the other cloth simulations, I want to click right over here on the modifier properties and I want to give us some thickness and then also add the subdivision surface. So I'm going to click on add modifier and under generate I can add the solidify just to kind of give it a little bit of thickness. I can also turn the thickness value down a little bit so it's just very thin. And then also click on add modifier and I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier just to smooth out the cloth and I can turn the viewport and render levels both to one and so that is looking a lot better now and it looks much more like cloth. Now this is kind of laggy and so I do want to bake it just so that it's a bit more smooth. 
So I'm gonna click right here on the physics properties and I'm gonna go right down here to the cache. So open up the cache tab and the start and end is at one and 250, so that's fine. So I can just click on the bake button. And while your bake is simulating, if you ever wanna stop it, what you can do is just hit the escape key. So I'm just gonna hit the escape key after 100. And so now it's just going to have baked those 100 frames and that is looking really nice. And also here on the end frame, I could just turn the end frame to like 100 and that way when it gets to the end it'll just loop back to the starting so that is pretty cool now there's one other really cool feature of the cloth physics that i wanted to show you and that is the cloth presets so the cloth physics actually has some different presets that you can turn on and it's going to change the settings of the physics to act more like different types of cloth so what I've done is duplicated all of these cloth physics, and then I've added some text here just so that we can remember what they are. So I'm gonna click on this first one here. You don't have to follow along duplicating all these if you don't want to, you can just use the one that you have. But just to show you, I'm gonna click on this one here, and then to change the presets, you can go right down here and just make sure you delete the bake. And then you can go right back up here to the top and it's kind of hidden, but right here there's this little button right here. It's like some dots with some lines. I'm going to click on this and it's going to show us some presets. So I'm first going to choose rubber and when I click on rubber, now you can see it's changed a bunch of the settings. So it's changed the mass, it's also changed some of these settings here to act more like rubber. I can click on this one right here and then I can click on this to load the presets. And for this one, I'm going to choose the silk. And then also I'll click on this one right here and I can click on this one here and for this one I'm going to choose leather but you could try out all these if you want to and when you click on the preset you can see it's going to change some of the settings. So I now want to bake all these so that we can preview what it looks like. So I'm going to scroll right down here and then what I want to do is click on bake all dynamics and this way it's going to make sure to bake all of the different objects with the cloth physics. All right so the bake is finished so I can just press the space bar to play and you can see how each object is interacting. So we have the default one here, that's the first one that we did, and it looks just like maybe a towel or just some basic cloth. Then right over here we have the rubber one and it does look a little bit more rubbery You can see it's kind of bouncing around a little bit So that definitely looks more like rubber Then we also have the silk one and you can see the silk one drapes down a lot and it's much more smooth And it definitely looks more thin and more light So that definitely looks more like silk and then we have this leather one here and that definitely looks like a big piece of leather So leather is going to be a bit harder It's not going to bend quite as much and so it's not going to fall around the monkey head quite as much So that definitely looks like like a piece of leather. So you can use the cloth presets to get something close to what you want, but then after using the cloth presets, if I click on delete bake here, I can change any of these settings so I can play around with some of the stiffness values or the damping or some of these other values to get the cloth to look more like how I want. So that's going to wrap up this tutorial on basic cloth simulations for beginners. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you found it helpful, and thank you so much for watching. And if you find my tutorials helpful and you'd like to help support me and this channel, I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. Those are all great ways to help support this channel. And if you'd like to learn more areas of Blender, then I've actually created a Blender Beginners Fundamental Tutorial Playlist, where I have a bunch of different fundamental topics like lighting for beginners, texture baking and texture painting for beginners. I also have UV unwrapping for beginners, also animation, some character tutorials, and also rigid body physics. So if you're interested in physics in Blender, then you might be interested in checking out that tutorial as well, and some other beginner fundamental videos like compositing, sculpting, and 3D modeling. So if you'd like to learn more fundamental topics about Blender, then definitely check out this playlist with the link in the description. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you for watching.